Now for more from Auckland is Robert Bartholomew. He is a senior lecturer in the Department of Psychological Medicine at the University of Auckland. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here on the program. Now I'm going to get your analysis on if relations will repair between the U.S. and Cuba in a bit. But first, I want to get some context on the story. What made the U.S. think that there were foreign powers causing this outbreak among U.S. officials in Cuba? Honestly, I think there's no other way to describe it but government incompetence. So do you think efforts uh, will be repaired uh, and the U.S. will come back with a positive answer to Cuba on its request to restore relations? I'm optimistic that uh, there's going to be improved relations in the near future. Um, this entire episode reminds me of a scene from Shakespeare, A Midsummer Night's Dream, or In the Night, imagining some fear. How easy is a bush, supposed a bear? And in this case, the accusations were against the Russian bear. But when you actually look for the detail, there was nothing there. In those directional sounds that people heard, in eight of the first 21 cases, they were recorded. They actually recorded the attacks. And those recordings were later analyzed and found to be the mating call of the Indies' short-tailed cricket. Right, and um, Cuba made the first move here saying, let's restore diplomatic relations uh, following this CIA report. Uh, and cases didn't just uh, emerge in Cuba, but it uh, spread beyond the Caribbean into Russia, Germany, China, Taiwan, Australia. Um, talk to us a bit about the symptoms that these people were going through and how it blew up into such a big deal for the U.S. to, re to resort to saying that it was a foreign power that was responsible for this. To understand what happened here, you have to go back to patient zero. In late 2016, you had some CIA officers outside their homes in a posh area of Havana. And what happened was they heard these strange sounds and they couldn't figure out what they were. And in late December, one of them went to the embassy and they had a headache and ear pain. And they mentioned that they had this strange sound outside their home. And a theory emerged that it was actually some kind of attack by a sonic weapon using sound. And then that spread to the American embassy and later to the Canadian embassy. But when they actually looked at the recordings of those attacks, they turned out to be crickets. And so what you've got here is a case of mass psychogenic illness going on in Cuba. And then in 2018, the U.S. government, the Department of Defense, and later the, also the State Department, started to issue alerts around the world to their personnel to be on the lookout for anomalous health incidents. Well, people started to report anomalous health incidents because ever since we've lived in caves, we've had unusual health incidents. It's nothing unusual. But the problem was these symptoms are things like fatigue, difficulty concentrating, insomnia. These are symptoms that are experienced by just about every human who's ever lived in any given week of their life. And that's the problem, the vagueness of these symptoms. But right. now all these people are on alert, and not everything is mass psychogenic illness. Some people are waking up in the morning with a headache and nausea, and because they've been told to be on the lookout for anomalous health incidents, the next thing you know, they're redefining an incident that they ordinarily would have anyway right. as this new label of Havana syndrome. Do you think that that's one of the reasons why it took so long for the CIA to come to the conclusion that there were no foreign powers uh, responsible for this outbreak? I think the E word is very important here, and that is embarrassment. Under the Trump administration and now the Biden administration, you've got lifelong diplomats and bureaucrats in there who I think realized a while ago that this was mass psychogenic illness and a redefining of a variety of mundane symptoms under this new label, but they were embarrassed. And all you need to do is look at what happened when Pamela Spratlin, the Biden administration head of the Havana Syndrome panel, back in September said, you know, I'm keeping open the possibility of mass psychogenic illness. Within days, she was forced to resign. And what that tells me is that investigation was being driven 
not by science, but by politics. All right, Robert uh, Bartholomew, thank you so much for joining us here on the News Hour and sharing that insight with us. Thank you.